I finally had the chance to travel to Japan, a country I've been wanting to travel to for years. So, I've been in Japan for two full weeks, and this is my last day in the beautiful city of Tokyo. So I want to take you guys with me on a full day in this beautiful city and show you what it's like to travel by train, by foot, show you the food, but most importantly, show you what it's like to wander around in these beautiful vintage camera stores because I'm on a quest to find myself the best vintage Minolta camera. So let's go. Before we hop on the train, a quick word on train tickets. If you're planning to stay in Japan longer, it's wise to get a Suka card. It's a chip card that holds money for fares. If you want to travel from city to city, get a JR Rail Pass. This allows you to travel by Shinkansen, which are Japan's bullet trains. I boarded the train at Kaihimakuhari Station as my hotel was there for work. I used the KO Rapid Line, which saved me about 20 minutes of travel time. On Tokyo Station, I switched trains and took the Chuo Line straight to Shinjuku. This only took me about 15 minutes. Senjuku is one of the 23 city wards of Tokyo and known for its vibrant business, entertainment and shopping areas. The city also hosts the busiest railway station on the planet, covering nearly 2 million passengers every single day. Something you notice when leaving the train station is the vast majority of people around you. On every corner you can find people singing, playing saxophone or the flute. Since I was here on official business, I went straight to the block that hosts these vintage camera stores. From Shinjuku Station, it's only a 10 minute walk. Finding these shops can be a bit tricky, so you kind of have to know where to go. I advise you to pinpoint these things on Google Maps so you don't get lost. Once you get in the shops, just be amazed by the amount of cameras and lenses these people have. One thing that you need to understand is that these people know exactly what they're selling. Don't expect to find a Leica M camera for $500. Instead, let yourself go and be amazed by the history that stands behind these glass doors. I looked around in the first shop I was attending, which is the used camera market. I took a couple pictures and notes about pricing, and I went to the second store, used camera box, which is around the corner. When entering the shop, you can see that it is kind of a mess. There is so much on the shelves that it is hard to see what he's actually selling. Also, his handwriting is not as good, so it was really difficult to read the tags. So, I kind of left this shop pretty fast and went back to the first one to make my purchase. A funny thing is, in the Netherlands, paying with cash is considered old school. But in Japan, there is no way around it. My pockets were overflowing with small coins, so I had to get rid of them. Receipt. So, I thought to be smart and go to a park um, to sit down and be chill because I'm super awkward in front of the camera with people around me. But I walked into another tourist trap. So I paid 500 yen, which is like 3 euro 50 to get into the park. And then I found like thousands of tourists, <laughs> which was a bit obvious of course because it's a weekend. But still, yeah, here I am being awkward in front of the camera with like 60 people around me watching me nice but i wanted to talk about the camera that i managed to purchase so i spent about two and a half hours in these vintage camera stores and um i found this one a beautiful in great condition minolta x500 with a 58 mil 1.2 actually a really really nice setup and um also bought a roll of film so uh, i start shooting with it straight away curious how these images turn out but uh yeah it's a pretty cool camera it has a light meter built in an auto function if you want to and it shoots at a maximum of 1000 of a shutter 
Uh, and of course you have your aperture so you can control your lighting through that but um, yeah it's pretty sweet uh, and the funny thing was that the, the lens actually came with an e-mount adapter for some weird reason so I can use it on the FX3 it was meant to be I guess so let's see what this lens looks like on the FX3 during sunset in Japan To finish my last day in Tokyo, I wanted to visit the busiest crosswalk in the world. So I hopped on the train to Shibuya. But first, I ate some sushi and prepared myself mentally, because what I was about to witness was quite crazy. To me, it's super fascinating to see how well and organized this all goes. In Holland, there would be police and at least a dozen traffic men to mend this chaos. But in Japan, no matter the chaos or the amount of people, they always stick to the rules, which is something we Europeans can definitely learn something from. After a long and exhausting 11-hour day in Tokyo City, I hop back on yet another train to finish the day. We're back in the hotel room. In the nice lighting conditions you can possibly imagine but um, yeah this is all I have anyway I hope you enjoyed this uh, this tour through Tokyo City and, and and the search for a vintage camera was a was a nice thing to do especially if you're alone here um, in my opinion wandering around the city without a purpose is kind of boring to me um, so having a purpose was a nice nice catch Anyway, I bought some takeout, I'm going to lie down, chill, eat something and then pack my bags because my plane is leaving at 11 in the morning and it's like a, an hour to get there. So it's going to be an early call. Anyway, thanks for hopping along and I'll check you guys later.